Remember when you were a bratty know-it-all teenager, ditching class to smoke cigarettes in the bathroom stalls of your high school with your shitty little friends and your mother scolded you endlessly about making new friends who would be a good influence on your life? Well, rest assured, your mother was talking about J.J. Rikaza. J.J. Rikaza's drive and discipline for not just shooting, but life is incredibly infectious. He goes through life with a laser focus that makes me want to learn to do everything better. Right now, I dry fire for 20 minutes on a Friday, and I feel like I've done something special. However, J.J. Rikaza dry fire practices every day for at least an hour. And that's just because he can't get to the range as much as he used to because he makes being a good father a bigger priority. When you're trying to tackle way too many things mm -hmm. in life, you got to kind of be somewhat organized. It's always been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't even understand where it's coming from. And it just it's just like a, a fire it just kind of turns on. And, it, and all of a sudden, I get focused and overly focused. And same thing with this business. When, at least when I'm starting this business, there's only really me and my buddy just mm -hmm. helping me out here. It's, it's a, basically a one-man show, right? With um, I'm playing different roles, salesman, um, back office, general office, and stuff yeah. like that. And I knew coming into this, there was things that I had to get rid of things in my life. And I like training. Training, yeah, yeah. I like working out. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I love shooting. Those are my mm -hmm. outlets. And then I have my priorities, family and work. I'm an instant gratification gratificationaholic, living life for the feeling. All I want is the immediacy of shooting still and mag dumping an AR. I go to the range with loosely tailored goals that I may or may not accomplish on a range trip. My lack of range discipline and training focus is why I'll never be able to do the things with a gun that JJ can do. Because it's his discipline and focus on becoming a better shooter that allows him to shoot at a level most people, including me, can only aspire to. Give me one draw real quick without firing a gun. Shooter ready? Good, all right, let me, so I got one thing. Okay. So you break down your draw, this is your draw, right? You go. Yeah. So yeah. that's your draw and uh -huh. versus mine. Do you see the difference? Yeah. I want you to snatch that gun out of that holster like you're snatching a goldfish from a pond. Or like, let's say your cell phone fell in the toilet. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't gotcha. want to spend time yeah. in there digging that around. <laughs> you want to get in and get out. Gotcha. All right? Yeah. So get in and get out of that All holster. Right. So give me one more draw. Right. Yes. Much better. All right, sir. You ready? So on the two, two. Two and two. Shooter ready. Ready. Stand by. Way faster, you're now at 244. Okay. Again, don't get excited. Gotcha. Right, let's control it, let this dictate. Prep and relax, prep and relax. Okay. It's all here. Now when I came up to this job, it, I literally had to give up a few things, which is training, fighting, yeah. rolling, whatever, working out. I haven't touched a single weight until I got my shipment here <laughs> in my office, and, and now I have it in my office and I'll lift whenever there's, there's some sort of, yeah, yeah, some sort of break. And then um, shooting, the shooting competitions. Is, now I really haven't shot, and it's it's kind of one of those things. But I'm like, I don't want to use it as an excuse. Mm -hmm. So there's other angles, and I'm like, I've done this before. Yeah. Um, it can't be a negative. There's got to be some positive I can get out of it. And then my former supervisor used to tell me, he's like, there's always a way. And you feel like you're struggling, and you're mm -hmm. you're kind of starting to drown up in underwater. Yeah. And it's just like there's always a way. So I figured I was like, you know what, I can do right now is like I have a time or a minute here or there, late at night when everyone gets quiet, and everyone, my, my kids are going to sleep. Mm -hmm. I'll go and dry fire. Like, you know what, why not just be the best weapons manipulator yeah, out yeah. there, at least in this specific platform? Yeah. And if I can be that, I can have that at least advantage and take that one conscious thought away when I'm manipulating my gun, whether drawing, reloading, or pointing the gun at a target. And my shooting and my timing, I'll just make up for that some other time yeah. in terms of my movements. When you train the way JJ Rikaza does, you start to see things differently. Seemingly small things that I would otherwise overlook, he tries to perfect. His focus on such micro improvements ends up making him look like a superhuman with a gun to the untrained eye. It makes me think how much better my life would be if I took the same approach to everything else I do in life and then also ask the question, what type of person would I become if I had JJ Rikaza as a best friend growing up? Typical training session for me really is just focuses on fundamentals and basics. Like I come oh. to the range and I just literally set up the most simplest stuff because I'm trying to have tangible goals that I can okay. I can measure at the end of the session. I'll go there with the thought in mind going, yeah, I'm going to need to work on my transitions today. I'm going to need to work on my splits today. And then 
I'll shoot, it's just static targets. I don't want to compound and shoot like an elaborate field course because mm. then there's too many things I can't measure. There's too many, th one thing, there's too many variables in between. Leading up to a match, I will look at the courses of fire. Uh -huh. Let's say it'll be 17 or whatever number, right? I'll look at it and I'll pick areas that I don't like and I'll set it up in a range, specifically that. And I'll run it at different uh, variant distances from 10 to 15 to 30, 40, 50, depending on how big the target are or whatever, whatever my capabilities are that day. And then I just work on it till I feel comfortable. So basically, so when you didn't turn around and look at it on the day of competition, you're not as scared of it no. as you were when you first looked at it right. going into it. Right, a lot of it is for me trying to eliminate a conscious thought. Right? I always believe conscious thought always impedes subconscious performance. Gotcha. So if I go in a range, if there's a slight thing in my head that I have to think about or react to, that's a tenth of a, a hundredth of a second that could hurt me in the game. All right, Colleon, you're gonna fire two rounds on each target, that's it, all right? Mm -hmm. As fast and as accurately as you can, <laughs> all, right. all right? Don't go crazy. All right. All right, shoot it ready. Ready. Stand by. <laughs> 255, right? Feel a little nervous? You got a little pressure on you? <laughs> I can kind of see it a little bit, right? That's yeah, your competitive like, juice I gotta coming get, in. I gotta get the... Right, so... Everything looked good in terms of mechanics. There's one thing that I, I think, I think just um, in terms of the intensity of coming out of your draw, uh -huh. obviously it's your first one, you're not warmed gotcha. up yet and stuff like that. Just meet and greet a little sooner. Like kind of, you, you were kind of, this was kind of lazy, you kind of just kind of came up here. I want you to like pursue that gun. Okay. And there's a purpose to getting out there, like it's a race, right? Okay. Stand by. <laughs> Much better. All right, so you're a second slower, you're 350, 77, mm -hmm. right? Your first shot was also about three quarters of a second slower. You went from, actually a half a second slower, you went from one and a half to a two seconds. So you slow, basically you slowed everything down, right? It's not that you didn't see your sights, because it was there. I just need you to commit to it. Pull out your gun, aim out, aim out to the target. I just want you to aim at the steel back there. Okay. Right? What I'm trying to do is help you develop this trigger reset prep. Okay. Right. This is this is where the game is at in terms of being able to do high speed marksmanship. Uh -huh. Right. So I want you to aim in. On the buzzer, I want you to fire one shot. Right. And only on the buzzer. Mm -hmm. But I won't buzz it unless you've done the trigger prep correctly. I'm looking for one thing and one thing only, and that's you prepping your trigger. Okay. Basically, you're dictating how fast you're gonna shoot. If you do it all right, this will go off all day long. Okay. But if you're not, there's gonna be a long pause. It's just gonna be awkward with you and I just sitting here, okay. not shooting, all right? Go ahead, aim in. Prep the trigger. There you go. Faster, here you go. Faster. Good, exactly. That's, so from here on out, when we shoot this drill again, I want you to think about that. So the gun is ready when it's basically pointed back on target, when it's, when it's cycled and it's locked in. Yeah. You being ready is, is when you prep the trigger and you've seen the sights. So I want you to minimize that disparity because a lot of times the gun is ready and you're still cycling that trigger, trigger. Gotcha. right? Okay. I want you to kind of marry that up where boom, it's coming down, I'm ready to go, it's ready to go. I'm coming down, it's ready to go, I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm not shooting the reset, so. No, no, okay. don't shoot the reset, you... that's, Okay. Okay, because that's pin and shoot type thing. Yeah. I want to eliminate that. Because okay. pinning the trigger to the rear, it's kind of just an inefficient movement. Gotcha. I want you to get out of there because it doesn't do you any good. The gun's ready to fire, and you're still having to reset and feel that trigger. Just a year ago, I was in New Jersey. Just up until a year ago. Uh, at that time, I was shooting a gun, like the race gun. Yeah. Um, that The small magazine, the capacity was 24 rounds. Mm -hmm. And um, the big stick was 30 rounds. And over there, we had a limitation of 15 um, per magazine, mm -hmm. maximum. And if you got caught with anything more than that, you, were, you could face uh, the potential of going to jail for up to three months per magazine. Now, and I had 10 magazines easily. Yeah. And I think for some people, they don't really conceptually understand why that's such a big deal. Now, were you traveling and shooting? Yes, I, I think it was 2003. My last travel of the year, this was my 15th travel and I was going to Guatemala. Yeah. I'm sitting there and a the guy's like, hey man, your, your flight's about to take off. He goes, what are you doing here? I'm like, I don't know, TSA hasn't gotten my gun. They haven't, I have the keys ready, I don't know. He's like, well, you need to go, just we'll call you when it happens. The minute he said that, here comes this guy in the suit and two PAPD cops right next to him walking right up to me. So I'm standing there going, I don't know what's going on. I said, sir, are you Simon Rakaza? I said, yes. He goes, can I see your passport? I said, like, here it is. And my mom's standing next to me and um, he goes, you're under arrest. I said, so what the heck just happened? This escalated quite quickly. Yeah. 
And I said, uh, can you turn around? We'll discuss this later. I said, sir, I'm a decent guy. I was like, man, I don't know what just happened. I'm declaring everything that I have legally, I think. This is the process I've been doing for all year. I don't know if I'm throwing myself under the bus. And they were just like, well, we'll turn around and we'll, um, we'll put, you know, put the cuffs on you under arrest. We'll discuss this in um, the precinct. So on the way out, they um, processed it, went to the precinct, and that just so happened to have done a demo a week before for the chief of that precinct. So the chief saw me and he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, well, he's like, what did you do? And I'm like, well, they arrested me for, I think, hollow points. He goes, hold on a second. He goes, he goes, I got this. He goes, he's a good guy. He just did a demo. He worked this contract. Take me to this one room, investigation room. He goes, the AUSA, we're calling, they're calling the AUSA now. It's not our job. Yeah. TSA flags you. We have to go through the process of arresting you. He goes, apparently you're carrying illegal rounds. He goes, it's not. I know the rules. So he actually came back and he was just, he highlighted the rules and he said, that's what you give to your lawyer. And I was lucky because I knew the guy and he did that for yeah. me. I was just panicked. Could you imagine if you were not J.J. Ricasa, at least to them? Jesus Christ, like, if I was just a normal dude who was going to shoot a competition and the same thing happened to me and I didn't know somebody there, mm -hmm. where would I be now? Probably in prison. Ever heard the name Shanine Allen, Brian Aiken? No, that's because they're not badass professional shooters. They're just everyday regular people who got caught up in New Jersey's insane web of gun control laws that did nothing but put good, honest people in prison. Shanine Allen was a mother of two who was licensed to carry in the state of Pennsylvania. But when she crossed the state line and got pulled over, she had no idea the nightmare she was in for. Brian Aiken moved from Colorado to New Jersey, driving cross country. Before he left, he called local police to find out exactly what to do with this firearm. He had them locked in the back of his car, unloaded when he was pulled over and arrested. This is what gun control advocates don't realize. They don't know anything about firearms, so they don't understand the implications of their laws. For them, it's all about the rallies, the hashtags, the let's feel like we're doing something sugar high. When you don't care what law you pass, as long as it's something that restricts gun rights, you create bad law. And when you create bad law, good people suffer. How many lives have been saved by New Jersey's ridiculous magazine restrictions, assault weapons ban, and insanely harsh carry laws? No one knows, but my bet, not one. But as long as these idiotic laws remain on the books, good people are going to continue to get caught in a bureaucratic hell that looks a whole lot more like Russia or China than the supposedly freedom-loving United States of America. From his rough around the edges look to his absolutely carefree attitude, Morgan Wade is supposed to be the anti-JJ Bracasa. But sometimes appearances don't just deceive you, they flat out lie. You don't want a gold medal in the X Games and reach the pinnacle of your sport without a ferocious amount of willpower and discipline. By the way, Morgan's a huge gun guy, and I'll prove it to you next episode. But for now, let's talk BMX. So how do you train? When, when there's something coming up like X Games mm -hmm. or another large contest, I definitely will want to be on the top of my okay. game, and that's yeah. where, like the the traditional discipline of training kind of more gotcha. more so comes in. What does that look be like? Though? It looks like I just I ride a whole lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more about frequency. It, it's so, more about okay. frequency than okay. it is about you know like making sure that the grass is perfectly groomed and the you know, the the yeah. Japanese sword making, yeah, you know, it's not like, it's yeah. not like that crazy, yeah. like minute. Injury wise, spleen. I, I ruptured my spleen uh, in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That sounds painful. So I fell, ruptured my spleen. Wow. Didn't know I had done it. I thought I just knocked the wind out of myself. And I was like, I'm laying on the ground and I hear the announcer, are you okay? And I give him the thumbs up. I can't read it, but I'm like, thumbs up. I just not went out of me, I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing that whole number. And uh, you know, some of the medics are running up there. I sit down and I go, when I lean forward, I was like, Ugh. I was like, oh my goodness, that, whoa, that is not good. Like this, this hurts really bad. So I went to get up and I put my hand down and I was like, that doesn't work. That's how I found out my wrist was broken. Go in the back, lay down and he pushes right here. And I literally 
was just like, holy crap, dude. It feels like my arm is being torn off. Not just pulled, torn off. Like, it, it felt so intense. And he goes, you're going to the hospital, that's your spleen. And I was like, oh crap, I'm in Brazil. <laughs> so that, that crosses my mind. And they actually uh, told me they suctioned two liters of blood out of my abdominal cavity, which is about a quarter of my entire blood supply. So I was actually pretty close to bleeding out and being that was the end of the game from that one. So when did you get back on the bike? 10 weeks, 10 weeks. And it wasn't because of my spleen. My yeah. spleen was pretty much good, yeah, but yeah. it was because my wrist wasn't healed yet. Gotcha. I think it goes without saying. I know you say it's all for fun. You know, you enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's something you love to do. I get that, but to, to literally keep going after that, <laughs> that, that that's, that, that's kind of an unspeakable level of discipline that a lot of people don't yeah, have. Yeah, and that's more, and it's, that's, a, that's a mental thing. Yeah, um, absolutely. I looked at it as, dang it, like, when can I get back on my bike? bike. Yeah. And I was, the first couple times I dropped in on a big, because I crashed on a big ramp. Yeah. The first couple times I dropped in on the big ramp again, it was in the back of my head, don't yeah, get yeah, me wrong. Course, yeah. I was definitely like, oh, shit, nah, I, wanna do this, shit I don't want to do this again, yeah. first run, but you have to force yourself to do it. At the start, it's way harder. To, 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 to come back from that because it's Absolutely. it's and that's that is a head game that is the mental discipline we're talking about that's something i consciously do after i get injured i will either go and do the, whatever trick it was i crashed on like out of the gate or work to doing that very very fast and get that little fright out of the way because gotcha. If it's there, it's nagging at you. It's, it's, it's going to keep you. It's going to hold you back. It's going to hold you back. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely try to, you know, get back at it as fast as possible. No, what you do is impressive, man. It's incredibly impressive. Yeah. Thanks. And I don't think I'm capable of it, <laughs> but I do appreciate you, you know, having me come out and shoot with you. Maybe we have to get you on a bike because it's the same thing. We'll, we'll, we'll try some it. stuff out, man. We'll, we'll think about it. <laughs> we'll think about it. I, I wouldn't be completely against that. But yeah, we'll think about it. <laughs> All right, it's time to have a little bit of fun, man. You got my open gun. Okay. It's called a race gun for a reason. Best race. There you go. Not too bad. 767.
miss on that? Uh, yeah, this is white, the white one. Jeez. All right, let's do it again. All right. Stand by. Yeah. 675, sir. Shit. 675. So you're only a second and three quarters away from me. That's it. That's well, pretty on, awesome. Your, on your bad run. <laughs> well, whatever, right? Let's not, go, let's not get too technical. That was pretty solid, dude. That was awesome. You smoked that. You could absolutely destroy that. This was literally one of my favorite segments. Wow, absolutely. Because I, like, first of all, JJ was dope as hell. Like, yeah. I need to hire him as my life sensei. Like, I feel like he would improve my effectiveness at anything. Like, yeah. literally anything. And Morgan getting through that, like, incredible injury and then literally back on the bike, back on the big jumps. I mean, that's I'm super impressive. excited about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you know what's cool? What I did, even though it almost killed me. Why don't you try it too? And then like, I did it again. <laughs> and I'm gonna do it again. And it's discipline. And, and it's discipline. And, and JJ has has a focus discipline, and That's and, and Morgan actually. has this this power discipline. Um, yeah, it was really I'm, like I'm, good lessons there. And also for people like, I mean, I know you're not interested, but I'm sure for people who are like thinking about going into like extreme sports like that, I'm sure gotcha. it's like very inspiring. Like JJ's inspiring to me. Growing up, I actually was very interested in extreme sports. Mm -hmm. um, as I got older, I got I got a little more wussy. Aware of the uh, reality. Yeah, of I began, like, like reality started to have a bigger play a bigger part in my that life. That line, right? that's death yeah. right there. Yeah, see, yeah, <laughs> that's and I, I, right I try there. to stay away from that line <laughs> yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. Right until something that I consider fun happens and then maybe I'll get closer to it. Really? But I'm, I'm, we, I'm planning a trip our... where I'm gonna bungee jump and oh, go yeah. absorbing and... See, I'm not uh, about that life either. Yeah, I, or, I'll do it. Or <laughs> apparently you can risk your your life and freedom by going to New Jersey with magazines. <laughs> can you explain this to me? Because it, it makes, I don't, I don't it, get it. It harkens back to my whole r redundant argument that lawmakers making laws about a subject they know nothing about ends up hurting people that we're not worried about. So what's the law? Versus. Basically, there's a limit in the number of rounds that your magazine can hold. <laughs> okay. Why? All right, so cl the clip limit. The magazine. Magazine, yeah. Right. Whatever, yeah. So it... Why, though? Like... Because they feel like the less number of rounds you have in your magazine, the less damage you can act. It, so exactly for automatic decided. weapon, you're not going in a killing spree because you have fewer. It forces you to. They believe reload. it forces you to reload, and oh. therefore which, get, which would give someone else the opportunity to halt the attack okay. during the time. Assuming somebody who woke up that day and decided to kill a bunch of people decided to follow the law and said he can only have seven rounds in his magazine well, because he fair. could go to Philadelphia and get as many as he wanted. That's much. crazy. Right. Can, yeah, go anywhere. I mean, they're, they're in a state. Those two cases, they broke the law without knowing that they were breaking the law. Yes. Well, am I right it's that they were though. coming in from out of, out, out of state? Yeah, because yeah. Brian was coming from Colorado. The mom was coming from... From uh, Pennsylvania. P Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah Pennsylvania. Yeah. And JJ was... This was his squad. Yeah, all yeah this was like a whole... Right. Yeah, that's crazy. And, of course, yeah. negligence or, or, or lack of knowledge of the law is no defense. It's not. Well, that's However, our training and, but it, even here's the one thing about about the, the kind of um, cultist aspect of yes. gun laws in this country, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this kind of piecemeal, you know, yes, different this laws. Patchwork of laws. Yeah. Yes. You essentially have to be in, like if you travel, yeah. you legitimately have to be an attorney in order to navigate all of the various laws. You really I don't, that's not fair. If you're doing like a road that. trip, and you got a fire on the it, car. I mean, you heard the guy. He literally called the local PD yeah. and asked them exactly what he should do with his gun. And that was crazy and to me, but the fact that the it sounds like, from what it sounds like, the police didn't know. They, like, no, no, they don't. And that's a problem. That's because they're the, because the laws are usually very vague, they're in, in the, and they're based on reaction, and they're not thought through. I and don't like and they're based on ignorance. Like, for instance... J.J. Rakaza's situation. Honestly, like, as someone who is 
still advocating for like sensible gun control. I was like, stuff like that pisses me off because you've you've taken the ground from under me. Like you, now you got me looking, you got me looking crazy. Like oh, sensible gun laws like this stupid shit. Now I look stupid. Like I, I don't like. Yeah, the- and that comes within the bounds of sensible. As, as much fun as we had with this episode, we, we can all agree that we're in unison. We we really like that. Enjoyed that episode quite Absolutely. a bit. I enjoyed all of them, but. I'm pretty sure you have your misgivings and yeah, continue. There's some good lessons there. No, this is yeah. a good, like seriously, this is a really good episode. Yeah. Like, I, lifestyle, all of that is good. Absolutely, I thoroughly enjoyed it, thoroughly enjoyed it. And like I said before, JJ just has this way of pulling out all of your inadequacies that you try to ignore on a daily basis. Um, but in, in inspiring you to fix them. <laughs> absolutely, yes. right. absolutely. Um, so that's, that's and, what's and pretty cool. And I think cool. we could all pursue our passions in life with that level of discipline. A quarter of that discipline, and I would seriously Rule the do world, a lot right? better. Yeah, Absolutely. you might actually what buy would a gun. Achieve? Let's not go too far. Let's <laughs> not be. I'm gonna end it right there so that she doesn't have a time to change her mind. But no. Ah. <laughs>